You're in a good place now. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight, I want to talk about one of my favorite things, one of my ultimate favorite things, and I think it's probably something that you love as well. You know, procrastination. Procrastination is key, really. It's key, I believe, to our society today. Where would we be without procrastination? Where would we be? And we see we're here right now. I I wonder about procrastination, but I also wonder where would our society be and where would we be personally if we couldn't blame others for the mess that we're in? I feel that procrastination and blaming of others has become our true best friends. We do that and then we walk to the bar and we drink and we think about what we haven't done and what we're going to put off till tomorrow. But better yet, if something happens and the ship goes down, well, who are we going to blame? Who is there to be blamed for the problems of humanity? There's got to be somebody. Heck, procrastination starts at the very top and trickles all the way down. We see it in every area of our community, of our society, of our government. Heck, if it's not procrastination or putting off what needs to be done or sweeping something under the rug, that's the third favorite thing, by the way, is sweeping it under the rug. Because, you know, it's easier to sweep under that rug, no matter that the rug is now six feet off the ground. It's a lot easier to do that than to actually deal with the mess that we've created. And I find this very interesting because I think this relates to all of us and every facet of our life and every aspect of our life and everything we do. It's part of our human makeup. When we were born and we came out of the womb and they slapped our behind, the three things that they slapped into us was, you're going to procrastinate and you're going to like it. The second thing is, now, if something goes wrong, you better blame other people for what happened. And last but not least, if those two things don't work, there's a rug that you'll sweep it under. And those three things will be your best friends besides the corner bar that you'll visit because you're, well, you're drinking away the sorrows of the procrastination, the blaming of others, and the sweeping under the rug because that's what we do. That's what we do, and we're proud of it, doggone it. We have friends that have been doing it successfully or unsuccessfully or unsuccessfully or however successfully you'd like to talk about it since the time we met. And that's what really, truly brings us together, right? So tonight I really want to talk about this. I really want to illuminate the concept of procrastination, why we do it, you know, the the whole meaning behind it, because I realize that we start to get in a rut. Yes, a procrastination rut. It's kind of like the concept where you're stuck in the car, right? I don't know if anybody's ever been there before, but this is the worst of procrastination. Okay, it's a it's a hot, hot, hot summer day. And you get in the car and you sit there and you don't even turn the ignition on. You just sit there and think about, my God, what do I have to do today? Oh, God. Can I just go back home and go to bed? I mean, it just seems so much easier. I can't stand so-and-so at work. They're always getting on my back about something. Ugh. And then you sit there and you're sweating, pouring sweat. And you finally realize you've got to turn on the ignition. Without turning on the ignition, the AC will not blow. And I'm telling you guys, I am part of the system in the fact that I have bought in to this procrastination. I mean, seriously, and what goes hand in hand with procrastination is the group of people we hang out with. Because think about it. This is kind of a challenging thought, but the people we hang out with directly relate to how much we procrastinate. The last thing you're going to do is hang out with a bunch of overachievers, right? Gosh, those people just suck. Those overachievers always doing something. What's wrong with them? My God, those people. They're just like, look at them. Look at them. Look at that smile. Yeah, uh uh-huh. You see what that says, right? They're messing with me. Uh Uh-huh. That's what it is. They're gunning for my position. Seriously, guys, think about it. I've realized that the people, the group that I hang out with, directly relates to how much I procrastinate and how much I drink. Because directly related to that, because think about it. Oftentimes, we do something to basically what? 
I don't know, take up time. And, and I found myself recently doing that. And I don't consider myself having any sort of drinking problem at all. But what I will say, when I get home from work, from the station, I go home and it's like I get myself in this pattern, right? It's funny. It's like we're like, okay, now it's time to have an adult beverage. And I found, and I don't know about y'all, but I found that for the most part, any time that I begin to engage in alcohol drinking, even if it's just one drink, I don't get anything else done. It's not like I start creating, you know, Picassos, you know, like I'm just like spitting out Picasso after Picasso after I start drinking. No. And maybe that's my environment. But quite honestly, I'm not really high creation in that level. I'm not highly functioning at that level. And I find that I use that as a means to procrastinate with the stuff that I need to do. And, you know, the reason why I wanted to do this show tonight, because I find it so interesting, is that I realize that we're not getting any younger. I know. Newsflash. I know. UFOs landed just yesterday, and we're not getting any younger. Unfortunately, right? I wish we were just getting younger. You know, like when people literally call you up and they go, Hey, Johnny's birthday's uh, on Sunday. We're going to have some kids over. Wanted to invite you. Wanted to invite your husband over to... uh Johnny's birthday. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Um, definitely. We'll be there. How old is Johnny again? Johnny's turning eight. Why can't Johnny just quit growing up? Okay, it's time that Johnny turns five, and that's the last birthday he has. Haven't you seen that? It's like everybody wants to talk about how their kids are growing up, and you know what that directly relates to? We're getting older. Okay? The kids need to say five and be quiet about it. They're even, they're way better at five anyway because they're fun and they're cute and they're not yelling at mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? It's just a great age and everybody benefits. Everyone benefits. But you know what? That's not the way the system works, apparently. We can't ground children at five and tell them that's it. Sorry, no more growing up. You'll stay five. Thank you very much. Thank you for playing. Please sign off on this contract. No, we don't have that. So what is so important about stopping the game of procrastination? Well, the first thing I can think about is, I don't know about you, but don't we have those few things in life that we just haven't gotten around to yet? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, I would call myself a victim. Yeah, let's use the victim mentality. I'm a victim of not getting things done. Well, you know what? That's just asinine, but it does make me feel better because I'm the victim. I didn't cause any of this. I'm the victim here. But it's quite interesting. I I have an issue with organization. And uh, I work... There's certain things that I'm very organized about. So, like, I have an organized, pretty much organized office... Actually, I have a very organized studio, and I, I could take stu- I could take pictures of that right now. I mean, this is organizing. There's no files in here. There's a couple of books from authors that I've interviewed on various shows, like The Celebrity Perspective, and some shows that you can find on Spreaker, Spreaker with an R, and iHeart. We have, you know, I have that own iHeart station, which you can listen to the last 330 shows and change. However, it's a very clean, tidy studio. However. Yes, let's talk about, let's just uncover a couple of things, because, you know, eventually it's all going to come out anyway. I have a tendency of not being very organized in my bathroom area, like I have a lot of products and stuff, and I kind of house everything in, like, this area, and I bought these little organizational little kind of, like, stack things. Yeah. So I've piled everything into the stack things, and now the other stuff that doesn't fit in the stack things are kind of all flowing out around it. So it's all kind of like, um, they're all kind of lined up, like the little products and like the toothpastes and stuff all everywhere. And my other issue is my closet. I have a tendency of not wanting to, I do give away a lot of clothes. Let me say that first. I do give away a lot of clothes for sure to charity and to organizations when they don't fit me, when they're too small, oftentimes, or too big, when I'm really lucky that day. But a lot of times, because I think uh, a lot of us, and especially women and men at certain ages, we have a tendency of gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight. And so you kind of keep some of that stuff around because you're like, you know, I could fit in this. This could look amazing. 
This could look amazing if I keep this diet up and I don't eat breads and I don't eat any cream or pastas. I'm going to fit into this dress and I'm going to make it look I'm, I'm going to make that dress look good. Well, you know what? I got a lot of those dresses and I still haven't been able to fit into them. So I have a closet full of half clothes don't fit. And I don't know, like a quarter of the clothes fit and another quarter of them are too big. And everybody talks about how I wear this frumpy clothing. And I'm not I'm not trying to wear frumpy. I'm just trying to wear what fits and what's in my closet. But see, I have a tendency of piling stuff in there. I have all kinds of stuff in my closet. I have memorabilia from various films and and, and all kinds of really neat premieres. I have picture books. I even have, I bought commemorative toilet paper for this election and the last election. So I have commemorative toilet paper that depicts Hillary, Obama, Trump. The list goes on. And, you know, I'm going to end up putting those in shadow boxes. But no, I have not yet purchased the shadow boxes. And yes, the toilet paper is just stacked next to shoes. And it's all wrapped, you know what I'm saying? It's all commemoratively wrapped. But again, we're organizing shoe box and shoes next to commemorative election toilet paper. And so as you can see, I do procrastinate. Now, how do we overcome this? And how do we stop blaming other people? And how do we stop sweeping under the rug? And what are some of the key, I guess, uh, tip-offs that we've kind of fallen into this uh, way of living? And how do we overcome that? And you know what? I'm glad that I asked that because I'm going to help resolve that before the end of the hour. Stay tuned because Live Your True Life Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back this time and see if I was procrastinating. We'd be back this time in three shakes, but we'll be back this time in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on perspectives. Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight, I'm talking about how procrastination is key. It's key and inherently obvious and inherent to our society. You know, without procrastination, and for that matter, blaming others for our mess, what will we have? And last but not least, we either blame others, and if that doesn't work, we do what? We sweep it under the rug. These are the three mantras that most of us live with for our entire life. They've become steadfast good friends, like frankincense and myrrh, You never see frankincense without myrrh, do you? I haven't. Hmm, What kind of person are you to have frankincense without myrrh, huh? Seriously, without procrastination, what will we have in our lives? What would we do? I get the fact that we would get a lot done and that things would actually come into place and that we'd feel fulfilled. But really? Is that what we want? Feeling fulfilled? Accomplishing our goals? Ugh. I want to talk about what I haven't accomplished, really. I want to talk about the things that haven't happened for me and how I feel that some people are totally against me and screwing me behind my back. You know, I mean, but the accomplishment thing's not a bad idea either. That could be good, but I just don't know if today. Yeah, I don't know if today is the day that I want to start that regime. It seems a little tough and a little hard and a little out of my comfort zone because I've been doing so well. With the choices that I've selected in my life. I've been doing so well. Kind of putting things off. And I've been doing so well. Hanging out with the group of folks that allow me to do just that. I had a client of mine come in the office the other day. And we met and we were talking. And uh, she was like, you know, I'm just... just don't feel like I'm getting a lot done. And I said, well, explain to me, you know, explain to me your schedule, your daily schedule and kind of, you know, because that's a big deal. But also explain to me, who are you spending more time with nowadays? So she started going into the situation and then she let me know, being that I am her therapist, that she's been smoking a lot more weed. And that she hangs out with a group of people that, you know, grow their own weed and and they're aficionados and they enter contests and... Weed's a big subject matter with this group, okay? I mean, it's like some of y'all out there where 
you're always talking about the greatest microbrew and and half of your friends are brewing their own beer at home and you're having taste tests and doing uh, beer pong and and all that stuff. Beer's a big thing in your life, right? And so I said, you know, do you think that it might be those friends of yours? And it's not just them, because we're not going to just blame other people for the fact that you're not getting anything done, because otherwise it'd be like, well, you know, I'm procrastinating because the people that I'm hanging out with are all a bunch of weed smokers and growers. And because of that, I'm not getting anything done. Okay, so we have to allow the fact that we're no longer a victim, that we've chosen our path to some degree. However, that's what I was talking about, like in the first segment, is the concept of procrastination is directly related to the group of people that we spend time with. And I am not saying that weed is good or bad or that micro brewing is good or bad, but I'm saying the group of people that we hang out with directly correlates to how much procrastination we're doing in our day-to-day life. If you're hanging out with a group of people who are moving and shaking and grooving and they're constantly getting things done and accomplishing things. And it's like, you're like, Oh my God, I just saw that. Uh, Wow, I just saw that you were hanging out with the gentleman that won the Nobel Peace Prize and that you're working on something for NASA. Okay, yeah, um, and what am I doing today? It really puts things into perspective. So first off, let's look at the group we're spending time with. Analyze the group. Now, it's not just the group's fault. Don't get into that. Well, yeah, it's all John's fault, you know what I mean? If it wasn't for John, I wouldn't be out at the bar. I wouldn't be hanging out. And I agree that coercion is definitely a part of friendship, but you have got to stand up and step up to the plate and say, you know what, Sean, I love you, and I do care about you, but tonight, for the fourth night in a row, I can't stop at the bar. I've got to go home and get some stuff taken care of, so tomorrow morning is a productive morning that I don't have to worry about, again, not paying my phone bill that they are going to disconnect tomorrow with a $25 fee charge. Okay, and I'll tell you a little sidebar. I'm going to go out on a little limb here for all of us procrastinators. Doesn't it suck when you finally step up to the plate and get something done before it's due, before the final notice, and you go online to pay the bill and the online system doesn't work? It's like, what the hell? I I went out of my way to pay this bill. And then what happens? So the online system doesn't work. You try it again. You try it again. It normally won't accept your passcode. You got to create another passcode, another passcode, another passcode. And you're like, ah, this is why I procrastinate. This is why I don't do this ton of stuff because they're always going to screw me anyway. And then what happens? You just like, you, you get mad. You can't pay the bill. It won't let you pay it. It's like, sorry, we're experiencing technical difficulties right now. You might want to go in and log out and try to log back in in an hour or maybe 24 hours. And then guess what? We don't do it. And guess what happens? Yeah, you got it. Then you're fighting the phone company over the $25 disconnect fee. Okay. After the fact, trying to explain the fact that you were on their online site and doggone it didn't work. I know that was a little bit of a side, side, siding sidewinding, soapboxy type conversation. But think about it. It's true. And we get insulted because we've actually gotten up and done it and it didn't work. And so we really got to think about the group of people. Are they overachievers? Are they underachievers? Is achieving even a word in their dictionary? And we have to think about that because, you know, a lot of people say you're only as good as the people you spend time with. You're only as intelligent As the people you spend time with. Birds of a feather flock together. And a lot of times I'm like, you know what? That's full of BS. But you know what? Honestly, to some degree, it's not. I've tried an experimentation. Okay, I've tried an experimentation where I hung out with some of my friends that I adore. But they are big into what I call drinking. They like to drink. That is their favorite pastime. And I just, I can't, I can't keep up. If I tried to keep up with them, I would be passed out. I would be like passed out. I would be already asleep. And you know, I've, I've tried to keep up. It doesn't work. But I remember I would just still hang out and I would drink water and I, but it just like, it, it, first of all, it got boring after a while. And then eventually I was like, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. And it wasn't productive in my life. What it led to was basically dysfunction. And I realized sometimes you, you got to get in where you fit in and you don't need to push to get in something that doesn't relate to where you're going. So really think about those people you're hanging out with. And I'm not judging them. 
This is not a show about judgment, okay? Just because John is a raging pot smoker doesn't mean that John's a bad guy. You just have to decide if John and you can spend time together and you can still get things done. Because if you can't, then John is getting in the way of your progress and your life. And in five years down the road, when you haven't accomplished anything, you can't get mad at John. You can't sit there and say, John, this is all your fault, doggone it. If it wasn't for you, I would have been fine. Life would have been great, you know? But you screwed up my life, you son. Think about it. See what I'm saying? Think about where this is going. John's not, John's not, you know, he's not your parent. He's not your mom. He's not your dad. He's not your guardian. And so you've got to step up to your own plate and say, hey, John, I love you, and I really care about you. I mean, if you're a guy, you might be just like, hey, John, you're, you're a cool dude and all. But, you know, I'm going to have to get some stuff done because you're no longer the victim. Things aren't just happening to you. You're creating your life, right? And this is a big deal when it comes to procrastination. And it's something I had to learn. And it's something we all had to learn, you know, with the process of not blaming others. Because I've been in that process years back before I knew better. Before I, once you know the truth and you, you're in it, you can't, it's hard to stick your head back in the sand. I mean, you can try. You can try. There's a lot of alcohol and stuff out there, drugs that'll help you try to stick it back in the sand. But you got to do a lot more. And it just, it gets a little excessive. Some people could say it's a toxic lifestyle. Yeah, so, you know, you really want to kind of focus on that kind of sort of thing. So the deal is, is this. What do you do when you know that you got to move on and you can hang out with those people occasionally, but you can't do it all the time and you can't blame them for your problems and you can't sweep the procrastination under the rug? Well, you know what? It's time to act. Oh, I know. It's it's just, it's tough talking about it. It makes me sleepy. You know, it makes me like, oh, my God. It's like it's like watching somebody work out for three hours in like the hot sun. And you go, you know what? I'm going to go home and take a nap or maybe I should go home and have a drink. You know, I feel like I worked out with you. Yes, it's time to act. So when I return, I'll be talking about the difference between action and non-action and also the other, the other categories that we got to look at besides who we hang out with that directly relate to how much we procrastinate. Stay tuned because me, Ashley Burgess, with your show, Live Your True Life, we'll be back this time. And you know what? We'll be back this time in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight I'm talking about how procrastination is completely king in our society. It is the tops of the tops. We all do it. And if we're not procrastinating, well, usually we're all procrastinating, but what we do to feel better about ourselves, right, is to blame others for our procrastination. They're the problem. They're the enemy. They're the person of interest. Hmm. Not me. And then if that doesn't work, we sweep it under the rug. Because if we actually know that we can't blame them, let's just sweep it under the rug because, you know what, we'll get around to it. I'll get around to cleaning my closet, doggone it. It might have been two and a half years since I've been saying that, but I will. And when I do, you'll all, you'll all be sorry. (laughs) Seriously. This is the way we live. This is the way I live. Procrastination is king. You know what I'm saying? And that is something I do. And, you know, I was talking about earlier before the break is that a lot of it directly relates to the people we spend time with. Yes. Our friends. Our friends directly correlate with how we live our life. I'm telling you, everybody do this. Do this test right now. If you hang out with friends who binge drink, do you binge drink? Yes or no? If you hang out with friends who drink all day and start drinking at 11 a.m. in the morning on Saturday and you go to brunch with them, you're also drinking at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Am I right or am I right? If you're hanging out with a group of folks who are really into growing marijuana and you like to win contests and you like to see who's got the best, you're probably smoking weed. So let's think about it. Our groups of people directly relate to who we are and the products of what we achieve, okay? Think about it. Who we hang out with. So the weakest link of the person that we hang out with is directly related to how we live our life. And it kind of goes to the concept, like I told my dad a long time ago, I said, you know what? I said, you want to only hang out with people and you want to only spend time with people who have more to lose than you do. 
that have more to lose than you do. And what I'm saying is this, is if someone has nothing to lose, if somebody has nothing to lose, then what the hell do they matter? What, what do they care about? They don't care about anything. If you got nothing to lose, man, I know matter what happens. We could all go down in a blaze of glory. I got nothing better to do. I got nothing going on in my life. And it's the same thing. And I'm not saying we are not judging. I am not judging these people at all. And I do not judge because judgment, judgment's asinine. Judgment is just a, that's just a personal, like, you know, Jerry Springer. You know, being a judge is one of your, it's like, it's like you're personally like a Jerry Springer show. Oh God, look at that person. My God, look how bad that is. Look at her extensions. Oh man, really? Oh, my hair looks so much better than that. Yeah, see, I don't do that because it's not cool to judge. But the biggest thing is, what is that going to do for me? Just because I think that I'm better than somebody on Jerry Springer? But it's the same thing. So this is a judgment-free zone. That's what hashtag LYTL Perspectives is, live your true life. Hashtag LYTL means live your true life. And if you remember, Oprah did hers, live your best life. And, and I came out with the Live Your True Life right before that. And it's the same thing. But I think true means authentically true. Like you've no longer put your head in the sand. You agree that there's certain things that you got to do in life. And now you've moved on and you realize, okay, I'm going to live my life this way. Even though it might not always be the easy way of living, but I'm going to do it anyway. And also, a lot of times it takes us like that learning curve to get over it and to figure out what we need to do. And then once we start doing the life and living the life that we're supposed to live, it gets easier and easier. And so it becomes our true life because we actually fall into or fall up in the place of where we need to be. So besides the group of people we hang out with, you know, the next thing is what does our schedule look like? What does our schedule look like when it comes to our daily work schedule, our weekend schedule? Have we created a schedule that actually aids and abets us to be non-procrastinating successful people? Or instead, have we created a schedule that we did to basically procrastinate in every single way? And one of the things that I realized that I was doing for a long time is that I wasn't getting up at my optimal time. I was getting up a little past that optimal time because I thought I needed just a little bit more sleep. And sleep is good, but it's also the actions we do the night before is very important and how much sleep we're getting and how early we're going to bed. However, I was trying to get that extra 30 minutes of sleep in, and I realized that that extra 30 minutes of sleep was putting me into a funk because when I got up, it wasn't going well with my body clock. And so I would wake up kind of like unimpressed. Like, it was kind of like I was already waking up past the eight ball. Like, oh, geez, why even bother? You know? And I didn't realize that I had this inherent clock in my body that was like, you got to get up at this time because if you get up at this time, you're going to be happy and you're going to be really, really stoked about getting up at this time. It's a perfect time for you. Get up, get up, get up, get up. And instead, I was like, just shut up. I'm getting up 30 minutes later. I don't care what you have to say. And then I would get up 30 minutes later and I was exhausted. I mean, like, really challenged to get up and to move around. I was so challenged. I was like, oh, my God, I can't even bother getting a cup of coffee. This is challenging. Oh, this day is already starting off in a way that I'm not happy with it. Oh, my God. Is this going to be the replication of what I have? And who wants to start a day like that? I mean, I did that for a long time because, you know what? I was inherently procrastinating. Because to some degree, I think in my head, it was easier for me to do that than to feel successful. And I'll give you a good example that directly relates to what I just said, because this makes it easier to kind of comprehend. Okay. You want to work out. You want to work out. You talk about working out. It's workout time. Yes. Oh, yes. It's workout time. Yeah, I just don't feel like it. I'm just so tired. I mean, I worked all day, and oh, the last thing I want to do is drive up to the gym. And Oh, my God. And the last time I was there, I mean, the bathrooms are so dirty, and, and uh, somebody had not flushed the toilet. I mean, I don't I might have gotten that cold. I might have gotten sick from that gym. That could be it. I could be saving myself from being sick, okay? And you go through all these uh, stories. 
and you avoid working out and you avoid working out and you get more and more lethargic and more and more feeling not so good. And then you also have this whole counterbalance balance of, man, I just can't get my stuff done. I mean, I just can't even get to the gym. I mean, what kind of person am I? I can't even get to the gym. I thought my health was important to me and I just, I just might as well have a drink. You know, I'm not getting anything else done. You see what I'm saying? But then there comes a time when you have to push through it. It's like you're pushing through this imaginary wall. And I think we've all been there before where we put the workout bag in the car that morning. We go to work, right? You go to work. And you're leaving work. And half of you's got the car pointed in the direction home when the gym is just right down the street. And you finally you go, okay. It's like it's like you got the Rocky theme song in the background in your head. You're like da 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 da, da or the A team, you know, whatever theme song you like. Uh, I like I like both. I like the A team too. Da 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 da. You know, because I like A team because my name's Ashley. Yeah, I know. There's no A in team, right? So anyway, you finally push through that imaginary wall and you go. I'm driving to the gym. And you're starting to drive to the gym. And you even try to stop. You even try to turn around. You even go slow through the lights that you could have made all of them. And said you slowed down right when you saw that yellow light about to turn. When you would have only beelined through that on the way to the bar. So you finally get to the gym. And you take your little time. And you, you put your bag in the trunk. And you do everything you need to do. And, you know, your computer bag or whatever it is that you need to put in the trunk. And you lock up the car. And you head in. And you, know, you show your ID, and you go through, and you finally change. And it takes you forever to change, and all that stuff. Anyway, and then you finally start working out. You get on that elliptical, or you get on the bike, or you start working out, and you feel great. And then you're like, why did I waste so much doggone time getting here and getting ready? And then you start working out longer and longer and longer, and then you realize the time that you have left, and you're supposed to be at home, supposed to be cooking dinner, whatever it is. But do you see what I'm saying? You finally broke through that, and that's what I was trying to explain earlier in that example. And that's what we all have to do when it comes to breaking through that veil or that, you know, that, that non-seeable wall, brick wall. It's like a brick wall that's made out of clear bricks. And we got to make it, we got to go through it. We got to be like the Hulk and go through it. And we got to move on with our life. And once we do that and we slowly continue to do that in all aspects of our life, our life begins to change. And as we put that into repetition, right, it becomes habit. And you can have a good habit. Okay, you don't just have to have a smoking habit. You can actually have a workout habit. We'll talk about that later. When I return, I'll be talking about the activities and the compulsions and addictions that we put in our way. And the barriers that we personally create. Check out AshleyBurgess.com. Ashley, B-E-R-G-E-S dot com. Subscribe to the newsletter. Just put in your email address and name if you'd like and subscribe. It's real easy breezy. And also check out, I have a new class coming out here in the next few weeks about teaching people, teaching you how to really write that manuscript that you've always dreamed of writing. Stay tuned because Live Your True Life Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back this time and be back this time in two shakes. You could be my luck. Get in here. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Yeah, you heard me. No procrastination here, doggone it. Tonight I've been talking about procrastination, blaming others, and sweeping it out of the rug. The three mantras of any good person in society, that's what we do. That's what we were born to do. That was our lineage, our bloodline, really. But I've been talking about how we can overcome procrastination, how we can move on, how we can change it up, and how we can actually achieve some of the amazing things that we've always believed we can achieve and make it happen in real time. You know, I've talked about the group of people really realizing and doing a checklist of the people you hang out with, realizing if they're underachievers, overachievers, not making judgment on them, but realizing that we are a product of the people we hang out with. Directly relates to how much procrastination we do or don't do. Think about it. The second thing is our schedule. What does your schedule lend to? Is your schedule something that really helps you to create great day does there does your daily schedule get you up at the right time get you going get you in, in charge of your life you know because some of us 
We're having difficulty getting out of the door, making things happen, getting to work on time. We don't get the stuff we need to get done beforehand. We don't get out of work till late. We're constantly hoping to get something done, and then we procrastinate what we need to get done when we get home because we're tired. We've had a long day. We don't work out. We don't get our stuff done we need to do. We don't pay our bills. Instead, we just go drink or we just sit there. We eat. We watch a movie. And what is that movie doing for us? You know, I've done that so many times where I'm sitting in front of that TV going, man, oh, got it. <sighs> okay, so I didn't work out and I didn't get the stuff I needed to get done. Instead, I watched a movie that I've seen for the 15th time and I'm drinking and I'm trying to lose weight. So this is really working for me. How is that working for you? You know, the next thing I realized is the activities. And this is what I really want to talk about right now is the activities and the compulsions and the addictions that we've added to our day-to-day life and how those really get in the way of our procrastination. And this is a really important thing. This is a really, really important thing because the activities that we've put in place can either help us or hurt us when it comes to procrastination and the addictions. The activities that I'm talking about are like, you know, how many meetings do you have back to back? Do you have a bunch of lunches scheduled throughout your day that cause you to panic and have difficulty getting things done on time? Do you like belong to like some crazy after work group that is starting to cause schedule issues? Like I have friends that love to play hockey and they're on a hockey league and it's great. But sometimes those games get in the way of them getting stuff done. And sometimes those games get moved back to 1045, 11 p.m. That's late during the week. And sometimes the activities that we actually, because at least with hockey and stuff, that's like a, that's like an activity where there's action and there's movement and you're getting exercise. But some of these activities that we've created for ourselves are just busy work. And we've got to really take a tally of how many things are we doing? Are these things going to help us be more successful? Will they help us get to a different level that we want to? Will this actually challenge us and help us later on down the road? Or is just just getting in our way? I mean, there's only so many board of directors you can be on before you have to realize I am on too many boards of directors and there's only so much I can do. There's only so many parent groups that you can be in before you're running around in circles, unable to catch your breath and wondering what the heck you're standing for. Think about it. We have to really think about the activities that we've created in our life Are they sustainable? Are they things that we want to keep? Are they things that we need to get rid of? Are they things that we can cut back on? Think about it. What about the addictions in our life? It's interesting because I have a lot of friends who still smoke. And I don't know about you, but smoking really gets in the way of getting things done. And I know that it can help some people think. It used to do that for me. I used to smoke and I used to think that smoking a cigarette made me think. I'd be like, oh, look, oh my gosh, I got to go smoke a cigarette. I have like this, the most amazing clarity and epiphanies. But I was also procrastinating because I'd have to leave work, go downstairs, go out the front doors, walk about 200, you know, 200 feet out of the way. You're not supposed to stand in front of the door and smoke and smoke. And I would always run into people and talk about stuff. And that smoke break would be like 20, 30 minute smoke break. And there I am, procrastinating. Are there some addictions that you actively participate on a day-to-day basis that are helping you to procrastinate more? This could be like drinking on the job, drinking at lunch, smoking throughout the day, whatever it is, there are certain things that cause us to procrastinate and they rob us of the time that we have. Another addiction that a lot of us have is Facebook. And because we can't really search Facebook at work oftentimes, right, we got to secretly sneak it. And there's a lot of folks work in offices where it seems like the bathroom must have like a big steel box around it because you can't get a signal through there. So what do you have to do? You got to go outside. You got to try to figure out that time that you can go on Facebook. You got to sneak it. And that becomes an addiction, too, because your time that you have to do other things, you're on Facebook, you're on social media, you're updating your Instagram, you're you're tweeting about something that you heard, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's good to be socially connected, but has this become an addiction? And last but not least, we have to identify the ways that we put barriers in our own way. The ways that we put barriers in our own way. What are we doing 
to put barriers. What barriers, really, are we putting in our own way? And let me explain. I still do this, and I used to put barriers all the time in my life, and you know what they were? If I don't have this or I don't have that, then I can't do this and I can't do that. Meaning, for example, let's say that you needed to go shoot uh, a big video project on location and you know you gotta you gotta have something you gotta have like you know an audio recorder and you don't have that you're like well if i don't have that then i really can't shoot it you know it's really not you're not gonna hear it very well okay well it's like all these barriers to getting things done and there comes a time when you have to just step up to the plate and say hey it might not be perfect but i gotta get it done i've got to move on i've got to get this going in my life and i've got to create this and i can't find other things to get in the way of my actual physically creating this and putting it out there and i've done that before where a lot of times those barriers that we put up might not be about an item itself you know what it could be about our ability i'm not good enough for this i'm not talented enough for this i'm not ready for this other people could do this better than me Am I going to be able to actually do this right? Do I have enough education? Am I right for the job? Is this right for me? And I, I understand this. I mean, this is not my first rodeo. I understand that. I do that all the time. You second guess yourself because you do. It's a human thing. Is to It's human to second guess your abilities, right? I mean, there's some people out there that are just complete know-it-alls, and they don't even know what the heck they're doing. But they believe in themselves no matter what. No matter what asinine comment comes out of their mouth, it's like it's gospel. And I'm not asking you or telling you to do that, but I'm saying there's got to be a happy medium between questioning ourselves on everything and being the other way. Because I think oftentimes this questioning devalues ourselves, devalues our ability, devalues our direction. But more than that, it actually takes us off target and makes us procrastinate more. It makes us procrastinate more because we don't feel like we're able to actually do it. Right? It's like we're, we're like, well, could we actually do this? Will we actually be able to do this? Can we do this? Is this something in my wheelhouse or more than that? Well, I just don't know. I mean, I might not do it right. And I really think that that's one of the places. And I think that right there centers in to where our procrastination begins. I think that's where it centers in on where our procrastination begins. And why I say that is because I feel that our procrastination starts from within. It starts from within. And if we don't believe that we can do something, that's the biggest barrier. And then what happens is we kind of act like that's not the issue. It's not the issue that I don't believe in myself. It's really, well, you know, I've been hanging out with this group of friends and we got all this stuff going on. And, you know, we got this weed competition or we got this drinking competition, whatever it is. And I got to do that. And so you kind of get enmeshed in that group. Okay. Or we're going to Vegas every weekend for the next six months. You know what I'm saying? And so you get enmeshed in this group, but you kind of sought the group out to escape the fact that you would put up your own barriers of procrastination based on the value and the abilities that you have. And instead of really looking at that fact and saying, I can't do something, I can't create something, I can't make this happen. Instead, we sweep that under the rug and we blame others for us not getting things done, i.e., I'm hanging out with a group of friends that I don't have time to get things done or my schedule is so tough instead of I created the schedule to offset the fact that I don't believe in myself. And so I'm setting myself up for failure, but I'm going to say that it's the schedule. Or, you know what, I, I, I'm addicted to cigarettes and I got to smoke at, you know, after every hour and that's what's really getting in my way, but I don't want to really quit. So it's got to be that or, or I have all these responsibilities. I am just so overworked. I got all these responsibilities. I'm oh, I'm just so busy. I'm just so busy. I apologize I didn't call you back about the meeting we had that I didn't show up to. I'm just so busy. But what's the real what's the real thing? I mean, procrastination breaks down to the desire to do something, the non-desire to do something, not wanting to do something. Not believing in being able to do something, not believing in the thing itself, not believing in ourself. There's all these different components, right? All these different components that get in the way of us actually succeeding 
creating some action and doing something. Think about this today. Do a checklist in your life. Get some perspective when it comes to procrastination, to blaming others for some of our situations, but better yet, the sweeping under the rug. I believe that this all comes from within. It's all created from within. And we do this strategically because we don't want to deal with the underlining issue, which is I don't know if I'll do it right. I don't know if I can do it. And I don't know if I can successfully make this happen. Try it out. Check out the website, AshleyBurgess.com. AshleyBurgess.com. Remember, when you start doing something and you create a good positive habit, if you do it for more than three weeks, guess what? It becomes a part of your schedule, a part of your routine. It makes you happier, healthier, wiser. Take care. Check out the website. Go on Spreaker, Stitcher. Go on and sign up and follow on Spreaker. Follow on iHeart. Make some comments about the show, how you love it, want to hear it. Stay tuned because Live Your True Life Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. Be back this time and back this time in three shakes.